Hey guys, this is Nomi Kunst. We are here outside of uh, Uber's offices in Long Island City, New York, where so many uh, different groups have come together in support of taxi workers, Uber workers, all in response to uh, Uber's executives supporting Donald Trump and, and the money, of course, that goes to Uber, the investing uh, in Uber, of course, does not help a lot of these workers who come from the countries that have been banned with uh, Donald Trump's executive order. We are lucky to have New York State Senator Mike Gennaris here. He's Deputy Minority Leader of the New York State Senate. Uh, so what are you feeling here in response to Uber's policies? Like a lot of us since Election Day have been feeling the energy on the streets uh, from the people who have risen up. And the great thing about today is that we're seeing results. Uh, to have the Uber CEO step down from uh, Trump's advisory council just as we're about to protest in front of the headquarters shows that when people take to the streets, things can happen. Now, we just have to keep this energy up for the next four years uh, and then turn that into results uh, at the ballot box and, uh, and uh, through government policy. And that's what we intend to do. Do you see any policies moving forward in New York State, uh, a democratically controlled, for the most part, uh, state? <laughs> do, you, do you see any policies that would affect these types of um, executive orders that could protect New Yorkers? Well, it's funny. You, you giggle because you know the story. But in New York State, especially in the Senate, we have a group of Democrats that are teaming up with Republicans who are Trump supporters. So just this past week, we tried to force a vote on my bill to say the Port Authority should not participate uh, in enforcing the executive order at JFK. And we weren't able to get a real vote on it because the Republicans, even though they're a minority of the Senate, are able to stop real votes from happening on the floor of the Senate. So we have a, a job to do as Democrats to get ourselves together, work together, stop enabling Republicans and stand united as an opposition, as the resistance, as we call ourselves uh, the Senate Democratic Conference, because the next four years is going to be the story of standing up, taking to the streets and beating back this, uh, this backwards movement coming out of Washington. Um, you do mention the IDC, which is, for our, our viewers, very politically engaged, uh, really tapped into what's happening at the local level. But for those of, of our viewers who are not in New York, can you explain what that is and why that makes a big difference? Yeah, the state Senate is actually has a majority of Democrats in the body, 32 Democrats, 31 Republicans. But there's a group of Democrats that decided to go give the Republicans the majority and vote with them, even though most of the Senate is Democratic. In, in this climate, it's outrageous they're doing it. They all get their committee chairmanships and the perks that come with that decision, but they've disempowered us from achieving the things we want to achieve. We want to be able to protect women's reproductive health. We can't get a vote on that. We want to change the ethics laws in New York State. We can't get a vote on that. We want to stand up and resist what's coming out of Washington, whether it's an assault on LGBT rights or assault on immigrants or assault on Latinos or the list goes on and on, as you know. But we continue to run into roadblocks because the Republicans have a bigger say than they should. And that's because Democrats are not sticking together. You're a Democratic leader. Do you think that they'll be challenged this election? Uh, from what we're seeing, it seems that challenges are coming from the ground up. There's a lot of organizing going on. Uh, we keep encouraging people to take this energy you see here, take the energy that's on the streets, take the energy that was at JFK this past weekend, and turn it into political activism. Uh, so we're getting a sense that it's happening now. The elections are next year, so people have to keep this up for a year and a half or so. Uh, but we really need to get out there at the ballot box, make sure that we assert ourselves, and for Democrats that don't want to cooperate, they should face the consequences. Looking at this crowd right now, you have a lot of, 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 of taxi workers and drivers uh, from different descents. Have you heard of any cases where uh, they haven't been able to get home or go home or their families are being held up? As a result of the executive order, you mean? Uh, we're still receiving complaints in the office about that. Some of the information is not forthcoming because it's very difficult to get information out of what's coming out of the airports right now. Uh, so we're trying very hard to see it. I don't know if anyone particularly here or part of the Drivers Alliance is subject to that, but certainly it wouldn't be surprising because many of these drivers uh, are from the countries that are the subject of the executive order. If it's not them, it's certainly someone in this community because we have over 100 languages spoken here in this part of Queens, uh, including people from all corners of the world. So everyone is affected by this, especially people in New York, especially, especially people in Queens, and that's why we're fighting so hard to reverse it. And just to be clear, a lot of the drivers are based here, the, the, the headquarters, the offices for the taxis and, and Uber. That's, that's right, right? Yeah, we're standing in front of Uber's headquarters here in Long Island City, but a lot of the drivers themselves live in this community. Uh, we have a very diverse community with a lot of people from the Middle East, a lot of people from South Asia, a lot of people from everywhere, really. Um, but we have a, a strong middle-class community, which is where a lot of the drivers of Uber as well as regular taxis come from, uh, and so we work our best to represent them. Thank you very much, Senator. Thanks very much, Norman. All right, guys, uh, we're going to show you a little bit of the protest right now as we're live. Uh, thank you so much. Let's, let's pan around and show what's happening here on the scene. 
You have somebody from the Alliance speaking right now before the community of drivers, uh, the organizations here supporting. And just for those of you who can't see, um, you know, it's hard to tell here on the sidewalk, but there is a, a there are barricades surrounding uh, those who are here to protest. It's a very narrow barricade that is around the sidewalk, so they can't come over onto the side of the building, and they can't go into the streets. Um, they're keeping it very well contained. We have officers there watching, uh, reporters here on the side. You know, of course, this was organized on Twitter, on Facebook, by a coalition of different groups, including uh, the taxi workers, um, the union of drivers. Uh, they've been here to support. Let's bring Mumita Ahmed here. Uh, Mumita is an organizer. She's been involved in a lot of different protests here in New York. Um, maybe we can do a quick interview with her. Hey, Mumita. So um, let's come around so we have this in the background, too. Mumita, you, we have Mumita Ahmed, one of uh, <laughs> the well-known organizers um, right now with so many different protests. How did you hear about this, this event going on today? Uh, well, this event, I heard about it on Facebook, and it was being promoted when we were at the JFK airport as well, so uh, well, right afterwards. Um, but I didn't organize this. This is obviously organized by the New York Taxi Workers Alliance and NYCC, uh, but I am here to support them because I'm, I personally know many, many taxi drivers. They, they're in my family, and so... Uh, and you're from Queens. Yes, I'm from Jamaica, Queens, so... Mumita... It seems like there are several protests a day happening in New York. You definitely are aware of them. Um, and they're happening all across the country right now. Uh, for those who are watching who might be interested in, in getting more involved, starting protests, what, give them like some easy tips because you have been able to mobilize people in a couple hours, uh, thousands of people in a couple hours. Give some people some tips on, on the best way to organize. The best way to organize is definitely to create more content online. A lot of people are paying attention right now. So you want to, if you're somewhere and you see a protest happening, uh, show up, tweet about it. And a lot of us are watching, use the right hashtags and people will pick it up. And that's, that's how I did it. And just remember that there are a ton of people right now who are out, who are willing to come out and support these amazing causes. And they can only know about it as if you let people know. So get online, use your Twitter power. Thanks, Mumita. All right. All right, guys, uh, we're going to watch this a little bit longer and see what happens. But it looks like the crowd's building up. Uh, there's still about 45 hour left to this protest. But um, it's a pretty powerful scene. And, and hearing the stories of the drivers who can't be reunited with their families is incredibly powerful.
Um, if you're interested in, in coming out to support NYC and our efforts and those of our partners, please text NYC to 864-237. Uh, this interfaith action will be held tomorrow, so I hope you guys will come out um, at 1230 at JFK International Airport, Terminal 4. We hope to see you all there. Know that NYC is standing in solidarity with all of you. Thank you so much. Now 12. JFK is out loud. Definitely we're going to be there. Absolutely. We have a media time television. Right? Live. You can see the www.timetvusa live for, for right now. You just put in the website www.timetvusa. TV USA, you can see the live program. Right now, I'm calling our proud brother, Osali Lantigua. He's driving an Uber. We can learn something about Uber. Thank you. My name is Osali Lantigua, and I'm a part of a NYCC and an Uber driver, lead driver, New York City driver. Community, I have a, a message for you. Drivers and customers, friends, we built the monster of Uber. We built Uber. Uber is supporting Trump. Trump wants to build a, a wall. We don't want a wall. We don't want a wall. What we want is welcome to our friends that want to come here to visit us. But another thing, Uber is planning to build the autonomous car to kick us out. Drivers, come and join us. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be kicked out of and stop from working. We always, we need to be, we need to come together because together we, we count. El pueblo unido. Thank you.
unions over here in this country. So share among them.
are gathered here. We are gathered here. Outside of Uber. Outside of Uber. To bear witness. To bear witness. To their ugliness. To their ugliness. When people came out to JFK. When people came out to JFK. And drivers called for a strike. And drivers called for a strike. Uber called to break that strike. Uber called to break that strike. Against a ban. Against a ban. because so many of these guys huh. it's through uh, the other step up back a yeah bit. let's go back over here he's coming over here right. hey so what's your name uh Fahad Ahmed you just gave a speech up there uh, in support of, of the drivers and workers, um, and you talked about how Uber and Trump are, are, are working together and, and people should be smarter. So what do you have to say about uh, Uber's CEO stepping off the Economic Council for Trump? Uh, I think just the fact that, you know, the Trump administration has been very explicit about their agenda from the beginning. Uh, so you can't imagine that they didn't know what the Trump administration was doing, right? The only reason he stepped off the council was because of the organizing of the taxi drivers, because of the organizing of consumers saying that they will have to pay a price for this participation. So it's not out of altruism or like good intentions. He stepped off because the people organized and forced him to step off. But the practices of Uber, which have long been called out by, by workers for a very long time, the fact that they supported the Trump administration, uh, despite everything the Trump administration was saying, shows us that the connections and, and the similarity goes much, much deeper between them. Uh, are you part of, are you a worker yourself or what's your background? I organize uh, with an organization called DRUM, Daisy's Rising Up and Moving. Some of our members are taxi drivers, uh, yellow cab, green cab, Uber drivers. Um, but most of our members are actually the family members and kids of taxi drivers. Now, um, if you spoke a little bit about the money that has been donated by Uber. What do you think of that? What, what does that reflect to you? I think... First, I think it's a dirty money uh, that, you know, Uber, you know, they talk about using the term sharing economy, but it's a worker share the labor and Uber takes the money. Um, and so it is dirty money. And it's just 
they're trying to placate. They're seeing the momentum that's building against them, and they're trying to placate people by throwing money, uh, by trying to say that they're stepping off this council, by trying to you know sort of push their media uh, messaging points. But we know who they are. We've known who they've been for a very, very long time, um, and we are not fooled. Why is it that drivers still work with Uber? Uh, you know, the, the presence of, uh, of Uber uh, has made uh, driving in New York City very difficult. Uh, and obviously I would defer to the people that organize the drivers for their expertise. But, you know, we've seen our own members, some of them feel like they can't afford to keep continue driving uh, yellow cabs. And so some of them switch to Uber. Some of them just find that to not be manageable either, and then they switch back. Uh, but it's just overall the the... The structure is not set up for drivers to be able to survive and be able to make decent wages for what is some of the hardest work in this city. Can you compare, um, make the comparisons between being a taxi driver, a New York City taxi driver, and an Uber driver, a Lyft driver? Uh, just so for those that are very new to this debate uh, based on these protests, and I think a lot of people may not understand. I think there might be other people that would be a lot more uh, skilled and experienced in being able to speak to that, uh, including some of the drivers here. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys, we're still here at the protest, the Uber protest um, in Long Island City, Queens, which if, if we pan around real quick, let's show that's the city just across the East River. So we're very close to Manhattan, just a couple of stops um, across the river. If you can see the, the, the skylines, the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building over there. Um, and we have... Uh, there's been a protest outside of Uber's headquarters for those of you just turning in, he, tuning in here in New York City, uh, where drivers and different organizations have come together uh, to support the, the drivers based in New York. Obviously, in response to the ban, uh, the executive order that Donald Trump has, has, has made banning people from seven countries, and of course, um, the Uber CEO being on the Economic Council up until just a couple, you know, 45 minutes ago when he announced that he was leaving the council. It, it seems like from the speakers and some of the people we've been speaking to, that they don't seem to buy it, that giving a couple million dollars away to ACLU uh, or to organizers and stepping down from a council does not make up for the fact that people aren't, workers aren't earning living wages, that they have, um, they're trying to monopolize a market right now on workers. Many of these people are immigrants who are the bedrock of our economy, and we're hearing this over and over that immigrants built this country. And uh, for somebody who's the CEO and uses these immigrants, so he actually has business interests in keeping immigrants in our country. Um, for him to support President Trump and be on that Economic Council is, is baffling. Uh, it's actually in his business interest to protect these people and keep them in the country. Um, of course, the workers' rights is a whole other issue. All right, we're going to show a little bit more of what's going on here. There's a lot of people and a lot of media that showed up, so we're going to push through this crowd. Guys, there is a, a helicopter that's above a, a protest that's being contained to the sidewalk, uh, and they've had to bring in the helicopters. I don't know whose it is, if it's a news crew, uh, or if it's an Uber helicopter. Is that an Uber helicopter? Because they do have those. <laughs> Maybe they're just trying to monitor this. <laughs> Strike breaker, a union buster, and a price gouger in the midst 
of a refugee and immigration crisis. Shame! Shame on Uber! That's right. That's right. We know who Uber is, we know who Trump is, and we know what we've got to do. Ultimately, the answer to fascism is not to go back to the way it was the week before Election Day or a month before Election Day, but to go forward to build a world based on international solidarity, to build a world with no ban, no wall, no borders, a world based on equality that meets the needs of the international working class. The, the National Writers' Union stands in solidarity with the Taxi Workers' Alliance. All power. Yeah! Yeah! I love to hear it! Yeah! I love to hear it! When the labor movement gets together with the masses, that's when we are going to make a big impact against this oppressor government. Be the